cold solid because you got your little space back there. And when in doubt, back up and look at it or hold up like a mirror and look, look through the mirror, you know, look at it in reverse. And that will kind of tell you if you've got any, any big flaws sticking out there that you might not can see. I don't know what that is about it, but just reversing it that way can really be helpful. Okay, let's work on this tree. A little darker here. Be careful to stay as thin as you can. You just don't want a tree that's fatter at the top or really not much more narrow than at the bottom. here with this, let's uh, do a couple touch-ups there on our fence. Just going to get a little bit light. A little yellow ochre and white with just a glob of what we had here. Now you take uh, your brush, get it very flat, or you can switch to a smaller brush if you want to, but you know I have that phobia about having too many brushes to clean up. So... Okay, now if our light's coming from this direction, we want to put just a tad on the fence from that side. And then this one, it's kind of hidden. We've got two there behind the trees. That's not that good. Anyway, like this, and just kind of uh, highlight your fence post there just a little. Probably on our next session, which I think we'll need one more session, we'll do a little more highlighting than that. But just kind of gives you a little more round of your trees and this is like a barbed wire fence we'll add some wire later and then we'll just, just kind of let it go like that and we're going to worry about shadows later as well okay looking at this i think that's just a little bit bare so we're going to fill that in just a little bit We want just a few branches here, but not, not much. Actually, I think we'll put in branches later. Now, what we're going to do here is put in some uh, leaves, and we want them to be sort of uh, natural looking. Let me just hold up our model that we're looking at these trees one more time. You can just kind of see how the trees we added, you know, just leave some holes for the birds to fly through, I guess. And um, we're gonna put it in dark to begin with because we'll go back with the highlights and um, bring it out, you know, with light from this side. So this time all we need to do is just figure out. And then these are a little more rounder, I guess, where the others, the evergreens are a little more pointedy. So start up here at the top and give us a nice blob of leaves in here. And like I said, we'll add the highlights after this all dries. The last highlights are really about the most fun part because you just kind of get to see your, your painting come to life at that point. This is some kind of a, similar to a birch, but probably never yet discovered because we're just doing whatever feels good, looks good to us today. We just want the idea of a nice little clump of three trees here. We want to probably get that filled in a little bit because you just don't want to leave too much around the edges to look like you were just trying to skimp or something. And you just keep turning your brush and thinking, Okay, let's just put a little glob of trees, leaves right here. And I don't think we're going to hang.
laying down too too low with them. These are a little bit sparse trees, I guess. They're not uh, probably there have been some wild animals in here eating off the lower leaves or just the winter weather or something might have got them. He was short on paint. Should have mixed up more there. Kind of grow together. Oftentimes you can't tell which branch goes with which tree. as we probably want to go with our leaves there. Now, whatever shade you've come up with here, just remember that we're going to go back in and put highlights and just turn it more into a regular looking tree semi-unknown variety there. And you could, um, where we've put the greens, you could do some oranges and things. You could make it any season of the year you want to. to that side but we're going to um, make it just a little bit lighter because remember it's a little further distance away and you don't want to uh, you know the farther away the lighter it should be and that kind of uh, helps you with a little more depth there okay now this tree we're not going to go about this high with branches just start, let's just kind of mark our top there. That's about as high as we plan to go. And then you just keep turning your brush. It won't be quite as wide or fluffy as those trees. Because this is just a newer tree. It hadn't had that long to grow. But it's still further away. We could make it kind of a scragglier tree. You know, like maybe it's been in a lot of windstorms or something. Maybe it grew real fast, so it's spindly tree. Technically, if you wanted to make this a fall painting, you would need to have a little darker blue up there in your sky. However you think a branch would grow, you just turn your brush and sort of fiddle it in a little bit like that. Goofy up there. I could do it a little bit higher. Okay, now I think we pretty much have those trees in. So I'm going to back up just a minute and look at it to get my perspective on it. Okay, now we're going to let this paint dry, then we'll be back to do our highlights on these trees, a little more right in the very background, a little more on the fence. I'll show you how to put some barbed wire, then we're going to do uh, some shadows across here. And I think instead of that road, we may just put a little path or something that goes to the back. But anyway, that's where we are today, and like I said, take your time doing as much fiddling around with your trees as you want to. They're fun. But just be sure you leave a little space because you know this is not a hedge it's just little trees standing out there so as soon as this dries we will be back to finish our project 